Hey, I'm Mike Spinelli from The Drive, and this is a show I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I'm at AI Design. About 13 years ago, I came here and I saw a car that was in process, a project that was kind of something that I thought was, actually, I thought it was total bull****, but as it turns <laughs> out, it wasn't. And um, I did too for a second. Yeah, exactly. What? Yeah, I did. I it was, was like, what the f is this going on here? <laughs> it was Alex Roy's Pulitzer BMW that uh, he, in which he did the run across America at uh, 3207. 31. Crap. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Fake news, dude. Corrections. <laughs> 30, Get your facts straight. 3104, 3207, having been the previous record, the coast-to-coast -coast, uh, driving record, Alex beat it uh, by going 3107. Four. <laughs> can, can we do this one more time? My name is Matthew Figliola, and I'm the owner and founder of AI Design. AI Design is an automotive customization studio in the New York metro area. I'm more comfortable with more complexity than with less. I prefer the work to be complex. I don't like it when it's simple. Outcraft is tailoring a vehicle to its owner, and we do it like no one else. So we're here at AI Design, the place where Alex Roy got his, uh, his project Pulitzer car done 13 years ago. Matt Figliola, the, the proprietor of this establishment, <laughs> whom you have seen on uh, previous episodes of Inside AI Design. Alex Roy is here because he has a, uh, a there's a new movie coming out soon about his run across the country. It's called uh, 36042, whatever it's, it's called. It's called Apex 2, The Secret Race Across America. Yes, thank you. It's, it's the director's cut of 3207, right. which never came out, which is the movie we all saw 10 years ago and wanted to have released. Um, and it's being worked on by JF Musual, our old friend. And uh, it's gonna be made the level of quality of Apex One. Right, which was a fantastic movie if I yeah, amazing. might yeah, say amazing. so. Look at this guy's so. in it, it's amazing. And just more speeding. Yes. More. <laughs> well, what's, okay, so just to sort of explain this, 3207 was the previous record, coast to coast, hours and minutes, right? Um, that was set in what, 1979? 1980, 1983, 1983 yeah. on the U.S. Express, which was the successor race to the Cannonball Run. Hundreds of people have done this back in, you know, back in time, starting with Erwin Baker, yeah. 1915. Cannonball. And hundreds of people have that's, gone. That's where the name Cannonball, that's where Irwin Cannonball, Cannonball came Baker. from, Erwin Cannonball Baker. Yeah. And so hundreds of people have gone across since we did this. And so the story of Cannonball, you know, I'm just a, another guy in another chapter of that story. Hopefully. Self-driving cars will put an end to that. So this <laughs> is a notable one too. I mean, it's a documentary, yeah. and uh, so on occasion of that documentary coming out soon, I thought it was a good time to go back and take a look at Alex's uh, E39 M5, in which he made that run. Um, and it's not just any E39 M5. It's the greatest E39 in the <laughs> history of E39s right. and probably BMW history. And part of that reason... <laughs> Definitely so. <laughs> part of that reason is all the work that Matt and his team did on it all those years ago. The systems in it were kind of ludicrous for the time. I mean, I walked in here 13 years ago and went, what the hell are you guys doing? I just thought Alex was just some schmuck who was like, just, you know, just doing some kind I was, of crazy. I was a complete well, idiot. Well, no, but I thought it was, <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I thought it was like a little bit of a vanity thing and, and then. It was also a vanity thing. But whatever it was, <laughs> it was a very cool technological. Uh, uh, it was a mission. It was a mission. It was, it was a, a mission. mission. I mean, that's how he laid it out like, as a mission. Yeah. We're going to do this and we're going to, do it. Right. <laughs> um, first of all, why did you pick the E39 M5? Just to recap. I say in 2001, look, I thought there was still a cannonball race somewhere in the world going on. And I heard about the Gumball 3000, and I thought that was going to be like the old cannonball was. Yeah. And I thought that I needed like a, a German sports sedan so I could fit people in it. And at the time, and I wanted it to be a manual. And that was the best car there was. There was the only car of its kind. Like, I, I didn't even know if there was an AMG E-Class back then. Was mm. there at that? I don't think so. And so I went hunting for the car, and I found one used in Ni Wide World of Cars. Mm -hmm. And they had this one. It was the cheaper of the two, because this was the unpopular Avis Blue. Oh, which I think is beautiful, but... 
I guess it was unpopular as a color. Well, it was owned by someone, I hope he's not watching this video, uh, I think we discussed this once, in the GPS, there were all these addresses. And, and I vaguely remember. And I think the car, I think the murder, the prior owner had been like murdered or shot in the car. <laughs> I don't remember it was, that. It was, a, it was <laughs> wow. an exceptionally cheap example, I don't know why. Well, I mean, it, it is a, a great car for going across the country at high speeds, right? Because that's kind of, it's an Autobahn car. Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and so uh, when I came in here, right, I was covering for Wired magazine. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was, yeah. I, I looked in the window and I went, holy crap, what the hell is all this stuff? And so that's where you come in. Now, the, there was the run, right? So there are components that were put in to facilitate your run un, you know, unmolested by the officers of the law. And then there was also componentry that was about filming or videotaping well, or videoing the run. The evolution, you remember, I came to you in 2002, mm -hmm. it was the first time. And I, was, I remember asking around, looking for a shop. The internet like barely existed. And Correct, I was looking yeah. for a shop, and if you, there was no Google, it was like Alta Vista and Yahoo. I remember like Googling like best aftermarket shop and like nothing came up. And so then I was like, all right, best high-end aftermarket shop. And it was you and some other sketchy spot. I remember coming in and I thought it was a big deal just to add hard wire kits for detectors. Like, I, I remember record, that. Yeah, and a siren, yeah. a siren, some police lights, and a hard wire kit. And I, I thought that was like expensive and a big deal, and I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. And then you learned what we could really do for you. That's right, because yeah. I was 03, came yeah. in, you did the gumball kit. Then in 04, I came back and said, I'm taking this car to Africa on the gumball. And then you put in a lot more gear. A lot more. I'm yeah. trying, I remember even the stages. And then we came back, and then it was the big move. It was in 05. I'm like, we're going to break the cannonball run record. Nothing can stop us. And I think I, think I said, Money's no object. You did say that. <laughs> More than once. <laughs> and, 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 With the drama, too. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then I asked you to sign a non disclosure. You did. And did everyone sign one? Uh, I signed one. I don't one. remember. So let's, let's take a look at the things that you actually put in there. Right. So, Matt, you, you get this project. Right. How did you then sort of sort through what Alex wanted and then and look at specifically what needed to be done for the for the car. I, I the first thing was just to to nail down what we could do and what we couldn't do. Yeah. There were so many things being um, suggested by you about radar what, jammer. You said radar jammer that. that you couldn't do that. Um, there well, that's were just things. illegal. I mean, that's just straight up illegal or is it just not possible. It's to illegal. Put in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not you're not allowed to transmit <laughs> a frequency like that. Um, but I think that was the first thing, just nailing down what we were going to do. And then, you know, what we do here internally is just we sort of map it out. You know, we, we basically make plans for it. You know, we write them up, we discuss it, we have a meeting, and then we just look at the car and look at what our obstacles are and define everything and, you know, we go about our work. You're being very modest yeah, because I anyone am. can say that. And what actually happened is but it, I came in here and I'm like, money is no object. Then you presented some numbers. I'm like, money is an object. <laughs> and then you said, well, you want it to work, don't you? <laughs> and I'm like, actually, it has to work. And you're like, well, this is what it's going to cost. It's going to work. What was the first system that you put in? I, th I think it's like what he said. I think we, we, we did some hardwiring stuff for various devices that he had clung to the dashboard. So that, all that you know, was, was, like, was mostly um, sort of to get around police radar was basically that was that. Yeah, stuff. but the radar, I think, was integrated even back then. I think you had yeah, the V1 on the... Yeah, the V1. Yeah. So the V1 um, was already there. Yeah. Got yeah, it. he had a bunch of stuff. He had the police lights, some performance stuff, I Sirens. think. Sirens. Sirens. Yeah, siren. brake light kill switch at that time. Brake light kill yeah. switch. I think we did the CB too. Yes. That was one of the first things that we did. Um, Do you remember? And I, the antennas. In, in the antennas. At that point, it was only two antennas. Yeah. Because we didn't need the air to ground the radio at that yeah. point. Do you remember in the 80s, there was an, a, an article car and driver, and the guy's, the author was John Bigone, John Big One. And he had a Corvette, <laughs> and that Corvette had everything. And I think I remember saying to you, like, that article was the list of stuff. That's where we started. Oh, and that's, okay. that was the original inspiration for the full kit. I do remember that. 
Because I think he had like a an he, escort installed in the... And he had the rear brake lights because he had the yeah. four lights. Yeah. He had switches to change the light pattern to look like different cars. Yeah, we put a blackout switch in yours That's so right. you could just shut off, just have your headlights on, but none of the other lights. That was cool. Yeah, still brake, works. Brake lights. Mm -hmm. So you started out with that sort of initial group of systems. What was the second phase? I think the second phase was really the the more significant things like the night vision, the fleeter, the hooded monitor on the dashboard sort of angled towards Alex as he's driving, mm -hmm. um, that sort of integration of that. Certainly the GPS, I was always enamored by how he was using the multiple GPSs. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, we had four of them finally. I don't think anybody, that, you were the first to do that. What were you doing? Think of that. We had uh, the driver GPS mm -hmm. yeah. and was, so I remember asking for a driver GPS yeah. As a, as a secondary speedo. And then the navigator had two. He had one as the navigator speedo trip computer and the second one for actual mapping. And then I came back and complained that at the end of the, of the practice runs, the GPSs didn't match. Right. I, I was so convinced that no one would believe us. And then you came up with the idea uh, to put in a, uh, a speedo slave to the wheels. Correct. And that was the little digital display. That yeah, just we, did we that. synced it up. Yeah. Yeah. And that was wise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's a really I, good I point. I thought that was the most amazing, like, thing that he thought up, how to use multiple GPSs to get a gain out of the run, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, that it was pretty clever. It's pretty interesting because when you, when you thought a lot about proving that you had done it, mm -hmm. right? That was a <laughs> giant, so there were, the part of it was, so the systems are actually growing, right? You start out with trying to evade the cops. The second one is trying to prove that whatever the time you got was exactly, I mean, you had a, a number of different ways of doing that. But one of those ways is like you had to hard sync, you know, your, uh, your actual wheel speed. Well, the so purpose there was of the no wheel speed to... sensor was we didn't know under, I remember you swapped out the ECU for us. You reflashed it and removed the limiter. And also, I think you did something, to, I forget exactly when it was, so the car would run a little leaner in sixth gear for fuel economy. And so we had this time, this Excel spreadsheet and we had all the speeds in tenths of a, of a mile of speed so we could predict, so we would know at any given moment like how we were doing progress wise. Because since all the GPSs wouldn't match, using the real speedo would allow us at any moment to say, okay, we've been holding this speed, we are likely to pass you know, our point targets. In 2005, six, seven, Mm -hmm. uh, there did not exist any consumer GPS as you could buy that um, would record the entire GPS track. So we could not, after the fact, go back and look at telemetry. So each GPS had a card that would store like a fifth or a sixth of the, of the course. And so proving all of this was very tough. And so you had to have mountains of data and across all the devices and at the end, after the drive, combine it in a, in a single spreadsheet. So that was... Um, Thank so, you for that. But that, yeah, was, that, that was, was right up your alley. Like, yeah, that was right, I mean, that kind of thing was really <laughs> sort of cool, I thought. Because it wasn't just fluff. It was real. It had a purpose. You know what I mean? And it, it definitely worked. It definitely worked. My favorite part of working with you was I kept coming up with these stupid ideas. You're like, well, it, I could charge you for that, but you shouldn't do that. <laughs> and we talked you about... You had a lot of ideas. We would talk... Uh, in fact, you were like a you were like a idea volcano then. Also, a money volcano. Just always <laughs> like, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we do this? Do you remember I asked you if uh, if we should do a second fuel entry point? I forget the reason you said you didn't recommend it. Do you, do you remember that? You mean to fill? Yeah. For the fill? Yeah. I thought I thought it was time because it would have to go in the trunk or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't remember. And then I asked you, uh, okay, why not do a like a a, a retractable arm? Or could we fuel car to car? Yeah, I think I just blew that one off. Yeah, you didn't like that <laughs> one. No, I didn't like that we one. Talked about a ch <laughs> we talked about doing a larger fuel tank, because you put in a, an 18-gallon tank. Yeah, that's siphon fed into the right. main tank. And I'm like, well, why can't we have it fill the whole trunk? Why did you say no? I thought it was a little dangerous, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, Plus, you had a lot of stuff. Dangerous. Yeah. Like, well, you had a lot of stuff. Well, I that was, car was packed. Well, I, my packed. Th my thought was, since no one had done this, and I didn't think anyone else was stupid enough to try, that even if we broke down, it was worth trying to fix the car. So we should keep uh, stuff with us. Yeah, well, yeah. And we brought two, well, no, we brought one full-size spare? Two. Yeah, you did bring one full-size We brought full two on one drive, but one on another. Yeah. 
Well, you needed the space. So, and then now we're getting into the actual recording for posterity, the run, and that included making it into a documentary film. But why would you believe anyone who does this? Right. If for 30 years no one has done it and it's allegedly impossible. You're right. Actually, that's interesting. You had the hardest job of anybody who's done it since you did it because once you did it and proved it, you proved it was possible and then everyone else after that sort of didn't have to kind of reboot the whole idea of the cannibal. You rebooted the whole idea of the cannibal and in doing that you had a sort of a heavier lift in proving it. Right, so you had all that stuff to do. It only cost for sure. Me X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, okay. Now, now but but talk, but talk a little bit about the documentary part of it, and and putting on the the cameras because they're lipstick cams. Because before there were GoPros, right? There were lipstick cams. Well, everybody. That was you. That was your solution. Right? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm like, well. can we put a flip cam in like a little cradle? You're like, nah, I'll never. <laughs> yeah, Matt. <laughs> actually, that's a, that's a good question. How did all of that sort of you know the the cinematic part of it. Well, he was just he 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 was just dead set on recording it all, you know, and having different um, uh, film views, and there wasn't really that much out there that could sort of take the punishment of being outside on the car. There were no GoPros, right? No, no there were no okay. GoPros. No. So and flip cameras didn't exist. And it, it was, was lipstick cameras. Yeah. Um, that was really the only which solution. is still in the car. And there was a really crude DVR, I think. I don't remember. Oh. Or it was like a broad. Cast grade one that you're, that was brought. I no, we remember. brought. I think brought something that we, we had these Sony DV cam yeah, tape recorders. Those, but they were like sort of broadcast quality. Yeah. but yeah. tapes, not discs. Tapes. Tapes. Right. And with you know each, and then there were two or three of them in the car. You hardwired um, the front and rear bumpers. Cam. They're still on the car now. If yeah. You can see it down there. And did the feed for the FLIR go into them too? Uh, we had the option to. Yeah. Actually, no, no, yeah, we did. We yeah, did have yeah. the FLIR feed. Record uh, forward FLIR, yeah. forward day, and rear day. And then there were six power outlets in the back and six or nine in the front. Lots of power outlets. Wow. Yeah. That must have been a giant were, lift. How, how did you get so much power into this car and make it work? Well, I mean, that was relatively simple because okay. that's what we do every day. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just have to basically tap the battery and have the appropriate stuff and, and it's just that I had never had anyone ask me or have a job sort of dictate that you need so many power outlets. I mean he had so many like plug in little accessories for the for the runs. That's right, that was before you were using so many little gadgets. I don't even recall all of them. We would need more outlets today for yeah. all the devices. Yeah. 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 Uh, well I was also And you wanted the control of that too. You liked the fact that you could sort of well, you did forward and rear outlets on separate circuits yeah. because I, my experience had been every a, circuit was fused individually because I always so they didn't get overloaded. And also, if there's a failure, or anything broke, we yeah. want to be able to rip it out yeah. and like, ignore and it, fix it. And I had always found I had a lot of friends who were ex-military. They'd always say to me like three is two, two is one, mm -hmm. like the uh, Beckwith, the commander of the Delta Force in '79. He's <laughs> like. You always bring twice as many choppers as you need. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a little redundancy sort of built into things, so it would sort of last. But and then you presented to me. I said to you, I said, Matt, before the final run, give me a list of ten things that could possibly go wrong. Make it twenty, and then attach pricing. And you gave me this list. You remember this day? It <laughs> yeah, was it was twenty things, and I'm like, what will it cost me to fix all twenty things? You're like X. What will it cost me just to fix ten? <laughs> and I spent it. I, it was it was a lot of money. And then we went on the run and broke down, and it was item eleven. Oh! <laughs> and you said that, I, and and I remember coming back, and I wanted to be mad at you, and you said, Alex, I told you this could happen, <laughs> and I should have spent the money. And if you look around, even today, at all the people who prepare to do these things, they are going down like the checklist of every single thing I did right here and the things I did wrong by not listening to you. And that's why looking back, I'm like, every dollar was well spent. I, I love you for it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I love you for it. What was it that broke? <laughs> was it, the, it was the, the fuel pump. Yeah. Um, yeah. It gave out. It was a cheap thing. And you're like, Alex, you can just do it. It's not. Just do it. It's and not I, a big I didn't deal. Listen. <laughs> I didn't listen. And you like that. I, I, mean, I remember I, that day. Did I get snarky I was with you? I was outside my house. like tending to my yard and I'm and I get the call from you and I'm I just sink I leaned up against my grill I'm on the ground 
and I'm like <laughs> hearing this news, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so terrible. Well, I didn't get snarky I, with you, right? No, you didn't. You were upset. Yeah. You were upset. Um, but I knew that I was gonna have to bring the car back to do yeah, it right, and so I yeah. thought I better be nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> it was, that was that was a that was definitely deflating for everybody, okay. and everything was going great up until that point. Yeah, and had we gotten across on that run, I mean, we got to Oklahoma City in like 14 hours and like 11 minutes. That's like a I mean, that's like a 28, 15 time cross country if we had made it all the way. Right. So, uh, and then the car was brought back here after I was almost arrested. The Oklahoma Lieutenant Governor launched the investigation. And, <laughs> and Which they, you can read about in your In, in my amazing uh, in book, book, The Driver. The Driver, um, yeah. Uh, so the car came back here and I, and I remember saying to you, I'm like, I do not care what it costs. Everything in this car must awesome. be replaced, everything, whatever it was. But we didn't add or anything new. No. We just kept it status quo and mm -hmm. just went through it. How did this compare to other work you had done? You know, I mean, because you had been doing this for a while. Yeah, I've been doing this for a while. I mean, this was sort of fun. It was different. It was outside of the box, you know. Getting back to what I said earlier, this was sort of like a mission. Mm -hmm. the, jo the car was going to do a task. It had a job to do. Whereas. Everything else I had done up until that point was more of like, you know, more vanity oriented, right? Yeah. Like I want this to look nice and I want a nice stereo, blah, blah, blah. But this was more, this was more specific. Yeah. And I had never done anything so specific before. So it was, it was sort of exciting, you know? That's Here's really this fun. guy who's um, very charismatic and has a lot of ideas and energy and he's telling me about what he's going to do. And, uh, you know, this is my initial thoughts, you know? And I'm like, wow. He's dead serious about this, you know? Um, I didn't think that at first, but it didn't take very long for me to determine that it was serious. But, you know, it was, that's, that's how I felt in the beginning. But, you know, I felt more than capable to do it because I wasn't, I didn't really have to do anything different. I just had to apply what I already do in a more specific manner, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, it was, it was the same process, but I think the stakes were higher. That was very clear, you know, because it had to perform. It had to survive the rigors of what he was going to do. You ran twin, we had twin cables, uh, twin police scanner antennas. Um, so if one went down, anything went south, because I thought that was indispensable. Or mm -hmm. you thought so, you put two. And I remember that you uh, suggested that we have actually two scanners, the hardwire scanner and a handheld. And the handheld. In case anything went wrong. and. One thing did go wrong at one time. I think I plugged in a cable, some some weird CB. I we think. could hear the our we had a spotter plane, and this and you had installed an air to ground radio with a separate aerial for it. And at one point, I did something. I pulled a cable out and tried to reconnect or splice it, and we could hear the plane but not transmit. So wait a minute. Let's just clarify though. You had a spotter plane. Also, yeah, right, and you needed to talk to the the pilot of the spot. That was plane. the one thing you yeah, couldn't and, test, and we, that, that was <laughs> so the one you thing a, you needed a you know a, uh, a you know a uh, an aviation. Grade I think it radio. was a VHF band or a UHF band. I don't you remember. bought me. Uh, I asked you, like, can you track yeah. down and test for me air to ground communications? You said, well. Do you want me to drive around Westchester and find a plane like where you want? <laughs> um, and so you, uh, you, uh, you picked for me a Vertex standard radio. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, on a separate, I mean, I remember that why that cable. That cable was separate, was, yeah. And, but had yeah. for one of the roof ones. Yeah. 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 And that worked uh, so until I f***ed that up the cable. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Where in your planning did the plane come in? When you were you know, talking to Matt about doing stuff, had you already been ready to do the plane? Uh, we talked about doing the plane. We weren't entirely sure, and I asked my friend Paul Weissman, mm -hmm. who had a plane, if he would do it. Yeah. And then the idea uh, came before the solution, for sure. Yeah, because I'd heard about the plane from the old U.S. Express race, right. and it wasn't, in, and I knew that it was true, but no one knew, um, no one knew whether it would be effective or not. Uh, and I remember asking you for another device. I asked you if you could install. Uh, a aviation trans like a receipt transponder receiver like a, a unit that detects planes and then you said yeah but it only detects planes in a, in a cone like forward of, a, of you know an aircraft so if the plane is just behind or nearby it would be effective and you saved me several thousand dollars yeah so you're talking yeah. about you had an idea 
to watch out for plane uh, for police, police planes. planes. Right. Police so you planes. had a spotter plane, but you're talking about not only you know uh, detecting police on the ground, but actually police in the air. Where in, in a lot of states they have those planes. Yeah, and in some and states, so that's not that didn't work out. That's something that you guys thought of, but it didn't work out. Uh, well, luckily, I think there was only one point at which there was a police plane around, and we heard on the radio that the, the truckers talking about a police plane. And then at one point we realized they were talking about our plane. <laughs> oh, so we were slowing down. We're like, where, where, where the hell is the police plane? And, and the, we asked them, like, hey, you guys see the police plane? They're like, oh, we don't see anything. And it was wow. our guys. Wow. <laughs> Someone I think even said on the radio, a trucker said, I think this plane is chasing that fast blue car. <laughs> Alex, you know, you have all the stuff installed. Matt's done it. You've, you've double checked it, triple checked it, done the practice runs. Can you walk through how you used each component on the day of the run? Back then, before Waze, before, um, I mean, yeah, we had cell phones, but there were no social media platforms. Right. So Waze and Escort Live and other methods of sharing location oh. for ourselves and other people just didn't exist. Yeah. And so each device, we'd have a different set of um, responses. So if the detector went off, and the Valentine display showed it was to the rear, we'd accelerate. <laughs> Because why, why would you slow down? That's like just <laughs> waiting for the guy to catch you. Um, if it was ahead of us, um, it depended if it was X or K band or K band. Um, if the scanner went off, uh, we would count the mile marker where we were. And if you hear the police saying what, you know, their location, if it was behind us, again, we'd accelerate. And so if the CB went off, you'd always want to be listening to what the truckers were saying, is it eastbound or westbound? So if two of these things indicate there's a cop ahead, you absolutely slow down. And then the spotter plane is the same thing. So you, you can't rely on any one piece of technology to give you, tell you what to do. Yeah. You can only rely on technology to give you the information that you choose to act on. And that's the difference between someone who buys a detector and someone who knows how to use a detector. Right. He had to use all of it. Yeah. Well, because you also yeah. had, um, <clears throat> you had a night vision goggles also. Not goggles, a display. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I asked night you about goggles. Yeah. You did. But I think the field of view and the depth of field right. wouldn't have worked. That's right. Well, the goggles you did have were actually gyro, gyro stabilized binoculars. It, it was just it, the first set was a Kenyan stabilizer, which came with its own like off-brand, pretty bad uh, binoculars. And then the second set, you remove the Kenyan and attach it to a pair of Steiner 7x50s. A beautiful attachment. To the dash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a beautiful method of securing it because that thing is like a brick on the dash with an accident. Yeah, it's just like, to crush yeah, your head. Projectile. Yeah. Okay, so now you've got the, 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 uh, the electronic detection devices. Now you've got your eyes. Oh, well, you, the electronic detection devices, you've got the CB radio talking to the truckers, which right. was the version of Waze, right. I guess, you had back then. You had your, you know, the, the navigator's eyes looking out with the binoculars. You had the spotter plane. Mm -hmm. you, had, you had the radio to talk to the spotter plane, right? Three you, cell phones, one on every network. Okay. There was a lot of inputs coming Wait. in that he had to juggle. Yeah, th there you go. Yeah, That's the thing. Yeah, a lot. And the technology was cruder than it is today. So you really had to, he really had to be super dialed in. And everything had to be look as factory as possible. Yeah, you because, know, still wanted to look like a car. Yeah, and I wanted to be able to... Be put, if I was pulled over, claim that I was a tornado research scientist. A storm chaser? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah I forgot and so, about that. Yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. And That's so exactly I, what yeah, you yeah. were saying. So I said to you, I said, this that needs was to like look the front that like you were... it has to look like a research vehicle <laughs> inside. And, and, the stu and, I, and people to this day still ask me, <laughs> 10 years later, like, wow, that therm, that the, 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 the Alpine <clears throat> in-dash displays, the hood looks factory. It's nicer than what you get today on a brand new G65 AMG. The way they attach that, that pad on the dash, is, it's disgusting. It's an insult. All right. It's not, I mean, seriously, and thank you for that. It's beautiful. You're welcome. But you matched the Alcantara. You met, because when I got the, did it the second time, like the second the upholstery car, you matched yeah. the upholstery to the hood. It was really yeah. So on. that's, a, wait a minute. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second, because cause Matt's, attention to detail has been documented on Inside <laughs> AI episodes that we've done. But like, there was a, an aesthetic reason to do that, but there's also a really functional reason to keep everything, you know, completely, uh, you know, 
sort of buttoned up and um, easy to use, right? Was that, how did you go about thinking about ease of use? Did you guys do any ergonomics well, talk or, or anything I mean, like that? I mean, he, he was very concerned with placement of things. Like, he gave me that input. Um, but how things were mounted and positioned and, you know, he, I think you left the display to me. I mean, you told me you wanted a display mm -hmm. on the dash, but, you know, that sort of stuff is what gets me going, you know, so I, I that's, that's easy. You know, I think you, you are know. guilty of having done too many high-end Costo object yeah, amazing installs. So. Let me remind you of a few <laughs> little things that I loved about what you did that I didn't even ask for. Like? So, uh, first of all, the display, the display being slanted, because I remember uh, saying, oh, you know, what'd you do? Uh, or how can it make it easier for me to see it as a driver? And you made it like it on axis the old six series M6 BMWs. They yeah. had the whole thing was angled. And you really put on axis. Then uh, the second night vision display, uh, you know, didn't have the hard hood the way the top dash one did. And you said, you said to me, because if the airbag goes off, that thing will kill you. Yeah. So instead, you put a lightweight plastic one that would just little fall away to the, instead of mm -hmm. a big heavy one that would just hit the passenger in the face. Also, you gave me this beautiful black molded cover. Because in, the, in front of the, uh, of the uh, stick Ch shift, there's the Whalen police light and brake light and siren control panel. And you made me this beautiful black to hide thing it, right? That fit, it looked factory. It looked as if there was nothing there. Yeah. Of course, I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> However, oh, well. it was beautiful. Thank you for that. Because <laughs> on more than one occasion, I was pulled over by, by the police. And if any cop saw that Wayland control unit, they would know we're committing crimes. Uh, they, would totally, they would know what that yeah, was. Yeah, right that was away. real bad. Yeah. And then you That's not storm chasers. No. So. You built, you took, you also took. I mean, I think everybody does this today. I guess all your customers do this, but back in 05, 06, I never saw a car that had what you did to it. You took the blinder laser jammer lights and you built them into the Valentine remote arrow display. So when the jammers went off forward or back, they lit up behind the arrows of the Valentine Yeah, so it was one, one place yeah. to look for yeah. the threats. And, and that yeah. was, and I, I love yeah. that. I, and it still works now. Um, and then the blinder laser jammers themselves or actually in the rear, cut into the black bumper molding. So it's almost impossible to see them. Or tell that they're- They even exist. Exist, yeah. Because a lot of people I know, and I've seen this, and I've never seen you do this to a car, but I've seen this done at other shops. When they install laser jammers, in order to conceal them, they make them, they put them in suboptimal locations. And, but they have to be exposed for maximum jamming. And a lot of people just don't get it. Since we did this and went public, how many people have come in and asked for the Polizei Alex Roy oh, package? Dozens and upon dozens. It's created a category. Like it's a it's a it's a new type of work. You know what I mean? It's it, people ask for this stuff all the time. And so, do you think these people actually use the package, or it's just? I think they do. <laughs> I think you they would do. know. Right? I think they do. It's like a, I mean, they're terribly interested in it. So. If somebody came in today and said, what is the state of the art, like Polizei well, yeah. package? How would how, you do it now? Yeah, like, like, yeah, that's what, a good question. Else, it, how far can one go beyond what we had? Well, I think you have the social media. I mm. think you still need some similar gear. You need screens and monitors to tell you everything. Um, radar detection is way better. Laser jamming is way better. What detector you, do you put in now? Uh, most often the new Escort Max, the 360. And that's a full and built-in system. Full, full built-in system, yeah. And is that in, and laser jammers you use theirs or someone else's? I'll use theirs. Um, sometimes we'll bolster it with uh, another company's. It depends. And then do you build in like an iPad for Waze? I've done that, but technology is changing so quickly. Like right now, CarPlay has Waze, so if you have a CarPlay ready r radio, now you can get Waze up on your screen. So it's changing so fast. Is there anything anyone's asked you to do that you still won't talk about? Because <laughs> I come in here and, you, and I want to take pictures, like you can't, you can't take pictures. <laughs> you can't take pictures. <laughs> and I see some build sheets with some numbers and uh, no names. I think it's just a small world when you come in here, you know, you never know. That's why I'm sort of antsy about taking pictures. If it winds up on social media or something like that. So the answer is yes. yes. There are projects you won't talk yeah. about. If someone was going to go across 
and uh, try you, and break the record well, again. It's happened already. Yeah. I imagine you wouldn't talk about it until you know we should stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should stop right there. Um, Alex, when's the movie coming out? Tell me, like, uh, what should I expect? Uh, I'm waiting for Matt to come back with an estimate to remove the stickers, <laughs> spray the hood, get the systems fully period correct, restored. Because the car is like a historic now. Yeah. And uh, in time for the New York Auto Show, where we'll be doing a premiere. 2019. 2019 New York Auto Show of Apex 2, the story of the secret race across America, uh, and then a private screening with you yeah, and your be favorite great. customers yeah. who will probably ask That'll be, for more installs. It'll be amazing. And of course, you can see more of Matt on Inside AI on um, YouTube. Dot com slash drive <laughs> and uh, and his get and his vacation house in Aruba paid for by, <laughs> by my install <laughs> <laughs> exactly um, cool uh, thanks to both of you guys I mean this Welcome. is a show obviously I said it before that I've been wanting to do this for a really long time and I'm glad we could finally sit down and really kind of it's a long show it's a long show there's a lot of info in it and um, if you have any questions put them in the comments and we'll get uh, we'll get these guys to answer them that's it. See you guys later. Thanks, man. See you guys later. <laughs> Still the best. <laughs> Still, the best. You. Still the you best. You got it, man.